and welcome to All My Art and Soul. I'm Michelle Holden, and this week is called A Journey of a Painting, Part 3. As you can see, this is where I left off. And um, so now I'm going to have a third pass at this 12 by 12 inch mixed media abstract on panel. And uh, the panel board is, um, uh, I'm beginning to use it the way it, it really is meant to use. Uh, just, you know, to me, a uh, little more sanding, uh, maybe, you know, more, uh, you can just use it a little uh, more, um, uh, more scraping, etc. cetera. Um, but you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll get used to this substrate um, as I do more. I have about one, two, three, five more of these that we're going to do. Some in a series, uh, some in, in two. Uh, but uh, let's get back to this uh, mixed media abstract. So as I was um, just looking at my uh, collage pieces on the side, I did notice this arc shape or part of a circle or whatever you want to say and um, I put it, it's the deli wrap um, or it might be the tracing paper and uh, it's a little thicker and, and I think it's better for that because it's very transparent um, well a piece of it was cut with that shape and I noticed how interesting it looked um, when I put it against that black rectangular area. I was initially going to use it uh, to paste down. I thought, well, I'm not sure about what the effects are, but why don't I trace the shape and see what happens? So this is, I could never have planned this. Uh, and this is what I love about the intuitive process. Um, the less thinking, the better, the more responding, and not that you're not thinking, you're just going to do the thinking later. And I thought, well, why don't I continue this shape all the way down with this particular value? I can adjust that value later. And I'm really liking and noticing on this painting the various um, saturations and desaturations of this yellow oxide, uh, some of it has a touch of the nickel azo gold, um, golden color in there, uh, which is very awesome because it's so transparent. And I'm liking where this curve is leading the eye down to this, um, all these little um, pieces and shapes, and you might want to call them bibs and bobs or whatever you want to say, but um, I'm noticing that I really want more of these little pieces in my painting, but they need to be happening uh, in the early stages. So what stage is this painting now? I believe I'm at the middle stage. Um, knowing if you're at the early middle stage or the late middle stage. I believe I'm at the early middle stage because now shapes, um, it's starting to become more organized. Uh, more organized how? Well, lights and darks. Um, color schemes are happening. Patterns are happening and different shapes are happening. But what if I don't like an area and what if I don't like the direction it's going? Well, then we can shift. How do we do that? Um, we can, say for instance, the lower right-hand corner where I really liked all those little things. I might just, um, in an opposite corner or thinking of differences or balance, um, start adding in a whole section of those. So then that would be going backwards a step. So I would take my uh, middle stage, uh, uh, halfway or late middle stage, and come back to the early middle stage 
and even the beginning. You can go as far back as the beginning if on your journey you discover something that you really, really love and then accentuate that. So as you've, uh, if you haven't noticed or if you haven't seen the two videos, part one and two, go take a look. And I know most of you are following this journey. I have not gone uh, as long of a journey with a particular painting, but I'm really, really enjoying this. So I think this might be a little bit of a pattern, a routine with my videos, especially as I want to move into larger work. Uh, I think the end goal is to end up with my five foot by six foot. I have two canvases just waiting uh, for some paint. So we'll see what happens by the late spring. We will start on those. But I, I'm not ready for those yet. I find I have some other things to discover about my voice, um, what it is that I want to paint. Um, and as some of my mentor artists would say, getting really clear with my work, with your work, so that um, when you um, decide to go on a larger piece, yes, you're freer, but your direction is, is, a, little, is a little clearer. Okay, so as you've noticed before, I've been playing, oh, I, I didn't glue it down yet. This is hilarious. So I'm liking the wider black against the thinner, lines. And this piece, this is, yes, this is a Brer on a jelly print plate and then the deli wrap is put on it. And I'm loving this. This, this, uh, you've seen me use this crackle, um, stencil before. Um, I think I got it at Curry's art store. This is Canadian. <laughs> We don't, we don't, and our, and our, the prices of our art materials are really expensive. Everything's expensive in Canada. Uh, so I was discussing in the earlier video that in the beginning, I really liked the colors of that particular piece of, um, it's uh, just a handcrafted paper with a pattern but I realized it has to go. But putting this thin piece of deli wrap with a, uh, a wonderful pattern on top, you can still see that there's something underneath. The, um, the slight peachy orange comes through and so do the little uh, blue bits come through. And I'm really liking it beside that wonderful yellow oxide uh, on the, the on the right, just below the black arc shape, the curve curve shape. So just going over with my this is my favorite brush that I like to use. The um, I'm using the heavy gloss gel. I find I just use that all the time because it has less water in it, especially for the collage pieces. Um, I know I will be experimenting with um, different ways to adhere my collage pieces, depending on what 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 they're what they're made of, uh, magazines or copy paper versus laser paper, etc. So you just might want to play around with that, but I find the less water the better. So here's this piece that will, um, and please stay to the end, especially if you are enjoying this journey, um, please subscribe and uh, hit that like button uh, because it helps with my channel and the algorithm and makes me maybe in the future uh, able to do this uh, on a full-time basis. I would love nothing more to do this 24 seven. So that's the goal. So this is a piece of just black, uh, I think it's scrapbooking paper, 
um, solid stuff, really nice, rich black. And I'm making sure I put a really thick coat of the heavy gloss gel over it. And playing with a little more black. So rather than use that piece of collage paper to cover that area, and notice I went, ended up using the, um, changing the, the higher uh, area to black versus the other. And this whole upper area here, the upper, upper left, ends up changing significantly. Uh, at this stage, the circle is still there. I'm playing around with covering it partially, uh, changing the value, um, lowering the contrast, and just having fun with the different effects. I don't want it just to disappear totally, but I know it's interfering with that upper left-hand corner with too many polka dots, but I do change those. And I've been thinking about um, uh, changing that whole upper uh, edge so just keep watching and see what happens. So I'm really loving the possibilities of this very strong orange. That is a little, oh no, that's a cadmium deep, the red that I'm using with yellow oxide and uh, nickel azo gold. Uh, those warm tones are amazing. And then of course your tight and buff and your white. And one thing I've noticed <clears throat> As you can see, I changed the circles, the circle, the repeated circles on the left that are um, raised and um, uh, just lessen the contrast and try to bring the inner part closer to the value of the surrounding area. And I'm noticing that this area would really benefit from a change in saturation here. So let's see what I finally make a decision on doing. I love this. Uh, yes, I reached for the uh, piece of text, and that's just an old book because we know how nice and aged some of those pages can be. And it's so nice uh, to use those. Just that particular text I'm finding doesn't go with this piece for some reason. I'm not sure. Um, I would like a larger or maybe a different font. Anyway, uh, right there I noticed as that long black piece was drying, it started to buckle up. So um, I have this final stage of part three in front of me right now so I can look at the video and look at where I ended up at this phase and yes, it did work, so it did not buckle up after I pushed down a little bit harder, but I should have been paying attention to it as it was drying. So I love this piece. I still haven't chosen to use it yet, but seeing it now, I think I see a place where it will go. And um, I haven't used it yet. Uh, the upper left hand corner has a piece, that yellow is a piece of yellow tissue paper, and I love putting transparent hues over marks. The polka dots, well, I like it because it's repeating the circle theme in a different way. Um, uh, you'll see in a few minutes, um, I'm just thinking ahead, trying to, okay, what am I going to do? Um, I chose to paint that black upper left to balance with the heaviness of the black on the right. And as I make decisions, um, change one thing, then it causes something else to change. But you just never know the order of it. So it's really cool. Um, this doesn't end up up there. I just find it's too, there's too much pattern going on. I like it. It seems to, maybe it's the ratio, maybe it's the size. So we're thinking scale here. Maybe I need to bring that piece down. And after putting the piece there, I realized, no, we need to go back to black 
and I'm really liking it much, much better. And using some of those scraping techniques, I'm allowing that, uh, no, I took the angle back to straight across. So I didn't want the eye going up and over. And then I remembered to do my wonderful scraping. I realized too here, I've not used my drips that I like to use, but maybe they won't go. We'll see what happens. And yes, remembering while it's wet. So as I've added the black, I'm noticing, because this I've been thinking, that little section of polka dots that you can see, there's, there's three sections above, there's a wider one, a narrower one right behind the circle. That I end up painting black as well, but I treat it in a different way. And I'm looking at it right now, it's not bad, but I think what I want to do is continue with those lines, those three horizontal lines across. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I haven't done that yet in this video, so let's just hang on and wait. I'm still wondering about the blue in this painting. I want, I think I want it. I love, oh, I haven't put it in yet. Okay. Um... I want three tiny, tiny areas of blue because the collage pieces that I'm choosing to put underneath the great big white, uh, whitish square in the middle um, sets it across and then of course stops the eye from going all the way down between the left hand orange rectangle and all of those black circles on white. And playing around with the wonderful little pieces down there. Um, just too much going down, uh, going, uh, going on down there. And I'm really liking the direction of simplicity with this, with this work. With the black and white crackle piece, I'm thinking of putting it in but not covering that bottom right-hand corner totally. And I think I'm looking at this. This is so cool. I'm looking at the video now, what I had before, which is pretty neat. I might bring some more tiny squares over that, and, and uh, we'll see what we do. So I'm really liking the richness of this orange and I really think that makes it pop. And the blue right next to it, which is its opposite, um, yes, playing around so it really brings the eye down there. So yes, I am really liking that. Still not letting that circle bother me, but from, you know, as I glance across after working in one area, it will catch my eye. And then I'll say, okay, well, let's see what this might look like. And now I'm noticing, nope, that isn't gonna work. But an overall change in the saturation really does help it. Why? Because it was too similar to the Titan buff across the way. So now I've changed it slightly and it's somewhere in the middle. So now we have three different values going on and I'm really liking that. And then of course the yellow is very different. It's a lot cooler up above. And here comes this black and white <clears throat> or off white with black. I know these marks fit with this painting. Just how? I'm really liking that too. Those two um, are really working. So as you can see, when you play, uh, so now I'm just playing with scale. So I'm low, it's not bad, but it either has to, it has to go totally across or not so far over. And this is the, this is the fun stage of collage. 
because you can see if it's going to work or not, so you don't have to totally commit to it. But I put that piece in. It definitely helps the eye because I really like that black with the, with the curved end. But then I find another piece of collage paper done with my brayer at the end on newsprint, uh, just with leftover palette, um, whatever I have. And I love it because it just creates something that I couldn't have thought of, thought up so easily. Uh, just sort of playing around thinking what is my next move? What needs changing? Oh, yes. So I thought, okay, what isn't there? Well, remember I started with all these lines with the China marker and looking at it now, that's still there and I'm really liking it. And you can choose to go over too um, with, uh, with the similar paint that's underneath it, cover it up a little bit, yeah, so now the eye comes down there. Really nice. I really like that. Okay. So, I know I had a piece of transparent. Actually, I really like these dots. I just overdid it. Not on the black area, and maybe not as white closer to the Titan buff. I think those need to go there. But I find, yeah, those are the dots I'm talking about. And um, another mentor artist. And I haven't made enough of those with the marks that I like. And um, I'm finding, I can't just go ahead and do all this other stuff. So I, I thought of this yellow. It's not bad. It's not bad, but it's rather distracting. I like it in the white area because there was originally, oh, I'm trying to show you. <laughs> there it is, my little blue circle. I just love this thing. I don't know why. Probably because my favorite two contrasting colors is blue and orange, and it goes right there. And whatever happens to this, this thing's staying, so. And I love that it's very close in value to the surrounding area. That yellow doesn't really end up staying. So a little alcohol spritz on a cloth, you can just erase that. So I decide to bring down some black dots instead and realize, well, they're pretty distracting, but that's okay. I can cover them up a little later too many small things going on in this. As you can see, I've got the white that I used in a higher contrast that is now sort of disappearing. Um, I'm liking the black line in the bottom, but um, those dots uh, do disappear. Uh, and the, the only ones that remain are the ones on the horizontal orange rectangle. So, if you noticed on that orange horizontal rectangle, there's a square and a smaller circle that's right above the blue circle. And in my work, I have a lot of uh, alignment. Um, just sort of, uh, it's a marker, you know, there's a lot of meaning behind that. And of course the circle, uh, infinity, there's so much meaning behind the circle. I'm really liking circles. Never really use circles a lot, but now I'm just fascinated by them. And so this is the um, Posco, mar Posco marker. But I find the blue isn't really there. It's, it's not strong. And uh, that's okay. All right. So I think I'm finished. So I let it sit for a while. And then I'm going to come in and cover certain areas, especially the collage, uh, that I might want to re rework over top. But just to make sure, because I've had a history with collage paper bubbling up 
or um, getting ruined uh, because of a, of a, I've had to erase the paint that I didn't like and then smudging and if there's water. So the more protection you have, the, be the better. And you can use just a medium. You don't need to use the heavy gloss. I'm just using it because it's, it's just convenient and it's right there. So um, that was the last piece that I set in that area, liking it and strengthening up even the yellow, bringing that value up. That's looking really nice because it's counteracting the yellow in the upper left-hand corner. All right, really liking that. Yeah. that oh, good. In this piece here, I uh, ended up taking that Titan buff down again and eliminating the yellow, but looking at it in my video, I really like all those interesting things going on and then shooting across. So I'm gonna make sure, maybe in a little piece of pattern or with some yellow and orange in it, maybe I'll find something else. That'll go right where I, right above that black line. So now um, this middle stage um, can be tricky, um, but remember, uh, you can always go back a bit. So take two steps back to go forward. And um, that's what I think um, I'm at now. But by the end of this video, I think I am in the late middle stage because I feel that I'm liking how things are going there's certain areas that I want to fix up, and depending how I fix those up, if I make another discovery that I like even more, that's when I have to make the decision, okay, do I want to keep that? Do I love it so much that I'm going to make changes to everything else? Um, that's how, that's how a, a painting can evolve, and um, those are the surprises that are so fantastic. So I'm looking at that. I know I like it in the lower right-hand corner, but I don't want to cover all that I put down. And I love those squares underneath. And looking at that now, I don't know. So I end up just trimming it up a bit and then using both. And I don't know if I'll keep the second piece where it is. Um, I'm definitely going to stain over it with the Nicolazzo a little stronger, just so it looks a bit different. And I like it down there, but now seeing what I covered up, no, I think it is good. It just brings a different element, plus it's simplifying. The eye is still moving down, and now we're going across instead of staying in that lower left, lower right-hand corner. Oh, I like it. And it's counteracting the black and white stripes below the polka dots in the upper left hand. So I'm just refining those edges, um, covering over some of those lines with some, I think here I, I mixed the Titan buff with a little bit of white just to uh, get closer to the value in the upper area. So here's this piece that I end up putting in a very um, interesting place right below the orange. So as you can see, I love, it belongs here, but how? So I turn it and flip it. And what I love in this piece of paper, a collage piece, is that there's a little speckle of blue. So, just what I'm doing is just blocking things out just to see. And, you know, you, you having different papers just for that. I think that's what I'll make. Uh, different values. I like that. But then I like the stripes. Yeah, no, those stripes need to be there in some way. That's changing so much. But they still are there. That's not bad. Nope. That shape... That whole area needs to be, it's just perfect the way it is. 
and where I end up putting that is in right below the orange um, circles. I forget the proper term. And I know subscribers, you can you can tell me. Um, I've laid in some thick cardboard and different texture, just randomly, not even planning anything, just putting it in different thirds of the painting and using it or not using it. And that's the coolest thing. Um, so this piece goes in right under there. I haven't come to that decision yet, but I'm covering up, oh, so the, here's that narrower piece. So it's stopping the eye from dropping. And then I know that I want to stain it slightly differently, more orange, just so it looks different from the other piece across. And oh, good. So I'm gonna, I took a look at the camera and realized just to raise up the, the painting a bit so you have a, a better view and lining everything up so you can see me mix my paints, etc., is really helpful. So I had the idea of, um, it was too sectioned off, all these sections coming across the top. And, oh, that just seemed to open up the energy flow of that area. And... Then I decided, okay, I can lighten this up a bit closer to, and this is where I decide to take it all the way down to the black stripe even farther so the eye goes down because I put that uh, uh, neutral piece with the black crackle on it, and that's looking awfully cool. So now we've got a distinct shape happening, and I'm really liking that. So then I'm bringing more of the Titan buff over so it's less white, and that's definitely working. So it's more neutral, and I like this little brush for this kind of work. So now that we're refining, we're making some decisions, we are definitely in the late, later middle stage. I know there's so many different, different uh, stages of the middle stage. And I like how the corner of that orange just sits there with the blue starting from it. So I may or may not, I think I'm gonna take a fine blue marker and go right to that corner very thinly to start that blue vertical line. And I may even put another vertical line in this painting. I don't know if it'll be in blue, but it's definitely gonna be in that area. Um, but really super thin with an equal value. So, I, and I've been thinking of this. So, <clears throat> where do we go from here? The bottom piece, the bottom area, I find could be broken up a little bit. So here's where I add that nickel azo gold over that neutral, just to give it a little more orange feel to it, liking that better. So it just it's not so much the same as the piece on the right. And again, this is the noose print uh, done with black on a jelly plate printer with the, um, with the wedge, catalyst wedge with the teeth, which uh, start very wide and then end up being narrow. And that makes some really cool lines. Okay. There. All of a sudden, I'm going, wow, I want this piece in this painting, and this is the only area it fits, but it needs to come right up to that edge. For some reason, it looks better. Done. 
Some of you might agree. Some of you might disagree. Please leave a comment. I read all my comments. I love when um, uh, some of you say, well, I, I, I wouldn't have done that. Or that's so cool how you ended up doing that. You know, who knows? This painting could have gone in so many different directions. <laughs> So, I finally made a decision. Make a decision, Michelle. Okay, here we go. Nice. And making sure it's right over to the edge so the eye isn't distracted and I'm looking at it right here. I still like it. That's a sign too. If you still like it the next day, great. If you don't, change it. <laughs> and, you know, you could have I could continue that horizontal line, make little, like, like who knows, texture. But I don't want any more patterns in this painting. There's enough. It is saturated with pattern. We have the crackle, we have the circles, dots, closed circles, uh, empty circles, the organic circles that you barely see, but they're still there. And of course, but okay, here we go, finally. I need to get rid of those those polka dots. I love my polka dots, but I don't like so many of them. So this also creates that, it opens up that area and makes the eye go across. Now, um, I think I want, I, I don't know. I might treat it differently. I think I like the lines where they are uh, and I end up changing the value of this circle anyway. But uh, this is pretty cool for now. Yes, so I'm, that's just a tiny little screwdriver. And I thought, well, let's do something different. At least it's a mark and it's different. I don't know if it works yet. Um, looking at it now, definitely something needs to change there. Some more horizontal to bring the line over. And some last minute details before I ruin this painting. No, I'm not going to ruin it. I, I like that orange and um, I might leave it. I might cover it up a little bit. So there's a few of these dots and I love, you see my work. Uh, and putting them where the value is similar. So then you're not going to interfere with the composition that is there at that time. This time. Yes, I'm loving that orange, but notice that it's just too strong. The contrast needs to change. Either it needs to be f closer to the background or closer to that white, big white square in the middle of the painting. And what? So I end up using, so I think I'm finished here, but I see where I want to put another curve that emulates that beautiful black curve on the right. And that's, <laughs> there it is. And, oh, okay, yes, that definitely would help. <clears throat> so as you can see, I'm still really attached to that yellow piece, but I believe it works there. So I'm gonna work on that bottom right-hand corner. Um, with some yellow, but tiny. And there's one last little move I make here. So I'm going to curve the corner in a moment, bring down that orange, and please, um, again, uh, leave a comment as uh, per some of the moves that I've made. Um, if you're liking this content, um, we are going to keep on going and I am going to, oh, here I am again, one last time. All right, so, making a circle and then covering it up with some collage because the black dots need opacity to cover up. So I'm just playing around with this feeling right now. And I notice when that orange is covered, oh, oof, it just takes away that tension in that area. So 
In some capacity, I do leave it. I use Titan Buff to cover it up. And let's see if I do that here. Yes, I do. So I finally make that commitment and it's so much better energetically, visually, even though that was some really nice orange in there. It just didn't work in that particular area. So now it's closer to the big square on the bottom. I end up covering up that horizontal line as well because it's a distraction and I want to use the surrounding area around the circle to move the eye in and around. So we'll see what we end up doing. So <clears throat> while the paint's wet, I decide to just put that single piece of collage, the circle, on there because it looks very similar to uh, the other collage paper, the lighter tones in that lower left. And we'll just see if I like it. If I don't, I can always paint over it. And yes, I find that's distracting. So I'm light, lighting, lightening that up so far. So now, though, I notice the, the beautiful arc, the heavy piece or shape on the right needs some more balancing on the left. So I'm emulating the curvature of that shape in this corner to guide the eye across. And then I think I'm going to let this painting rest until... Oh, some more stripes. They definitely work. So I hope you enjoyed this video, part three, and I will see you in the next one.